In today's discussion, we're going to talk about the future of work and how it's undergoing a radical transformation that's driven by the rapid advancement of automation and artificial intelligence. While these technologies offer immense potential for increased productivity and economic growth, they also raise profound philosophical and public policy questions about the future of employment and the distribution of wealth. First of all, how do public policy experts think AI automation will impact the job market? Experts acknowledge that AI and automation will displace workers in roles involving repetitive, predictable tasks. This primarily affects sectors like manufacturing, transportation, and customer service. But they also emphasize that AI will create new jobs in areas like AI development, data science, cybersecurity, and roles requiring uniquely human skills like creativity, critical thinking, and complex problem solving. A major concern is the potential for a skills gap where the skills of displaced workers don't align with the demands of emerging jobs. Policy planners see a need for proactive policies to prevent uneven economic impacts and exacerbating income inequality. They stress the importance for governments and businesses to invest in education and training systems that equip workers with the skills needed for an automation-driven economy. This includes lifelong learning initiatives and accessible and affordable retraining programs. They also think that strengthening social safety nets like unemployment benefits and healthcare access is crucial to provide security for workers during transitions. Some even suggest ideas like shorter work weeks, workers' cooperatives, and universal basic income as a way to deal with this situation. So what are some overarching political philosophy and policy solutions to address the challenges posed by this AI-driven job displacement? As you might guess, different political philosophies offer contrasting perspectives on how to navigate this uncharted territory. Libertarianism, in one fashion or another, has been popular with many technology leaders, such as Peter Thiel and Elon Musk, with its emphasis on individual freedom and minimal government intervention. This perspective might advocate for a laissez-faire approach, trusting the market to self-correct and create new opportunities. However, critics argue that this approach could exacerbate existing inequalities and fail to provide adequate support systems for workers during periods of transition. Furthermore, it places the burden of adaptation solely on the individual neglecting the role of societal structures in ensuring a just and equitable outcome. Libertarian supporters counter that concepts like effective altruism can produce better results than bloated government bureaucracies. They also contend that a focus on innovation that accelerates technological, economic, and societal progress, free of excessive government regulation, will be better for everyone. Yeah, I probably should do a video on that effective altruism concept. What do you think? In the opposite direction, some suggest a 21st century version of socialism. This philosophy recommends greater state intervention and redistribution of wealth to mitigate the negative impacts of automation. Supporters think this could translate into policies like universal basic income, revitalized trade and professional unions, robust social safety nets, and significant investment in public education and retraining programs. They believe that by providing a safety net and ensuring access to resources, a socialist approach would create a more level playing field and prevent the concentration of wealth and power in the hands of those who control the technology. Critics point out that such a system would stifle innovation and investment and would lead to mediocrity. They also point out how many socialist systems have failed citizens, even resulting in massive human tragedies. Supporters respond that innovation for the benefit of society and the collective good can be a powerful motivator for many people, and in a fair system, everyone's voice can be heard, not just the well-connected wealthy. They'll also note that the negative outcomes of the past are lessons to be learned along the path and not the desired end result. Of course, there are some philosophies that suggest a third way. One is communitarianism, a topic I covered in a previous video. This perspective emphasizes the importance of community and social cohesion in navigating technological change. 
It might advocate for policies that strengthen local economies, support worker cooperatives, and foster a sense of shared responsibility. By prioritizing social inclusion and a sense of purpose beyond employment, communitarianism seeks to prevent the alienation and atomization that can result from rapid technological advancement. However, critics argue that communitarianism is too vague, often providing broad pronouncements about the importance of community and shared values, but lacking concrete policy proposals for addressing specific technological challenges. For example, it's unclear how, practically speaking, communitarian principles translate into real-world solutions for issues like AI-driven job displacement. Supporters place the emphasis on fostering a process where communities can identify their own needs and priorities, and then work collaboratively to develop appropriate solutions for them. Basically, they don't think any one-size-fits-all solution is the way to go. Another idea is the capabilities approach, a framework championed by philosophers like Martha Nussbaum and Amartya Sen. It primarily focuses on expanding the real freedoms that people enjoy. In the context of AI and work, this could mean ensuring access to education, health care, and social support that enable individuals to thrive in a changing economy. It moves beyond simply providing material resources and emphasizes the development of human capabilities that allow individuals to lead fulfilling lives. However, in addition to vagueness on policy prescriptions, critics point out that the capabilities approach has a strong potential for elitism. They worry that defining a list of valuable capabilities can be elitist, imposing a particular vision of the good life on individuals. This can be especially problematic in technologically driven contexts where new capabilities are constantly emerging and individual preferences and values might differ significantly. They also point out that such an approach could interfere with individual choices in ways that restrict personal autonomy even if those interventions are well-intentioned. Supporters of the capabilities approach respond that there should also be an emphasis on freedom, agency, participatory processes, and sensitivity to context and diversity. They argue that the approach provides a framework for empowering individuals and communities to make their own choices about the kind of life they value while ensuring that everyone has access to the basic capabilities necessary for human flourishing. I think we can see that there is no single, one-size-fits-all, correct approach to dealing with the future of work in the face of AI automation. However, I also think that a combination of policy solutions will likely be necessary to address these complexities. First of all, having a meaningful and proactive investment in human capital via education and retraining is crucial. This includes not only emphasizing STEM education, digital literacy, and critical thinking, but also fostering creativity, adaptability, and emotional intelligence, skills that are difficult to automate and increasingly valuable in the 21st century workplace lifelong learning initiatives, and accessible retraining programs for displaced workers will be essential to ensure individuals can adapt to evolving job markets. Additionally, we will need to strengthen social safety nets by expanding unemployment benefits, health care access, and other social programs to provide security during periods of unemployment and transition. This could also involve exploring innovative approaches like wage insurance, which helps bridge the gap between a worker's old and new salary after a job displacement. It may also be worthwhile to experiment with new economic models such as UBI, shorter work weeks, and alternative forms of ownership like worker cooperatives. These models do challenge traditional notions of work and income, potentially providing individuals with greater flexibility and control over their time. Of course, how to implement these programs effectively and fairly is a massive question. Thus, navigating the future of work requires a lot of collaboration between governments, businesses, labor unions, and educational institutions. Open dialogue, proactive engagement, and compromise are essential to ensure that the benefits of technological advancements are shared broadly and that the transition is managed in a way that is just and inclusive. 
If we continue down the path of my side is always right and your side is always wrong, no workable solution will be reached, probably to the detriment of just about everyone. Okay, so what about the human element? How should you go about redefining your work and purpose in the age of AI automation? As I see it, one should embrace creating your own meaning and purpose in life, even in the face of absurdity and uncertainty. While AI automation might displace us from traditional jobs, it also has the potential to free us from the necessity of work defined solely by economic needs. This could open up possibilities for exploring new avenues for self-discovery and fulfillment. We also should be responsible for our choices and actions, even in a world increasingly shaped by technology. We must actively choose how we engage with AI, how we define our work, and what kind of future we want to create. We should also consider the impermanence of all things, including our jobs and careers. AI automation is a reminder that change is inevitable, and clinging to fixed notions of work and identity can lead to suffering. Embracing impermanence can help us adapt to the changing landscape of work with greater flexibility and resilience. We can find purpose and meaning in contributing to the well-being of others, even if our traditional forms of work are disrupted by AI. In the face of AI automation, we can adopt a pragmatic approach, exploring new possibilities, developing new skills, and adapting to changing circumstances. You should also embrace lifelong learning, developing new skills and knowledge that are relevant to the changing world of work. Be open to exploring new fields and industries. Don't live for work. Instead, find meaning beyond work by cultivating hobbies, passions, and relationships that provide a sense of purpose and fulfillment outside of traditional employment. Lastly, be open to new possibilities and embrace the uncertainties of the future. AI automation presents challenges, but it also offers opportunities for growth, creativity, and self-discovery. What do you think about the future of work when it comes to AI automation? Do you see it as a good thing or bad thing? Do you think a particular political philosophy is the right path to take? Or do you think a blended approach is a better option? Do you see automation affecting your work? Let me know what you think in the comments and subscribe so you won't miss my upcoming videos on some of the political philosophies I touched on here.